Hello, this is Demeter. Welcome to H Studio Design Academy. In this video, we're going to be comparing different ways of getting trees into our scenes. They can come from add-ons or from different resources, both paid and free. There is a variety of ways to get trees in Blender. You can always go to BlendSwap and use the wonderful assets the community has created and shared with us. This is a sample of Evermotion's new tree asset package. I think it's called Nature Package. The nice thing about it is that it's really lightweight, but their pack is not cheap. I think it's about 120 euros. But the lightweightness of it would be significantly beneficial for having many trees in the background. Then there are also plenty of packs on Blender Market. Here's one. This one is cheap, I think it was $15 or so. And the quality of it is pretty good. And the models are also not as heavy. Again, the detail is not as strong as the growth trees. But it still does a really good job. So the shaders are really good on these trees here. There are currently three add-ons that get us to have good looking trees. One is called the Sapling Tree Generator. Then there's the Space Tree Pro. And then there's the Grove. If you're interested in the Grove plugin, there's a whole video on my channel showing an in-depth review of how it works. So how does the Grove compare to the Sapling Tree Generator and Space Tree Pro? So here is a tree from the Grove. And this is a maple tree, by the way. And this is a maple tree from the Sapling Tree Generator from the sample. In fact, let's just do another one. If I go to Shift A Curve, Sapling tree generator. I need to scroll the way up to see my options. Setting. So it has a lot of options. I'm sure if somebody plays with them enough, they can get pretty good results. But most of us, we don't have that m amount of time. That's why presets I find are really important. So let's look at small, small maple tree. I think the, it's the exact same tree as this. Maybe slightly different, but you can see the difference is significant. However, this could be used as a base potentially for trees that are sitting in the background again. If we have really good trees in the front, we can reduce the poly and have some of these in the back. Or another option is getting this tree or getting a number of trees from the growth and potentially pruning some bits that may not be seen in the scene. Perhaps it's all the lower elements or just one side or some way to limit the geometry that's not visible would provide significant benefits for rendering times. Right, and then there's the Space Tree plugin. This is what I could get from it. I bought this a while ago. I haven't used it much. I'm sure that if, you, if I play with it, it's quite nice. And I think it comes with pretty good animation. Let's just try it again. I think this is it. Yep, Space Tree. And uh, so it has a couple of nice things that should be noted is that even if we move the tree or we do any other operator, the options are still available here, so we can continue to change them. Ho however, it doesn't have presets. And I, I think there's a pretty good manual somewhere, but for me, if there's no preset, if there isn't a button that I can press and get a result that looks good fairly quickly, then I'm not going to bother going through and modifying all of these elements to get a good looking tree. So I hope this gives you a good overview so you can develop your own strategy for populating your scenes. And let me know what do you use to create trees in your scenes. Thank you for watching and if you enjoy this channel, please subscribe to it.